On October 14, 1968, the tranquil town of Meckering in Western Australia was suddenly thrust into chaos. At approximately 10.58am, the ground beneath this small agricultural community shook with a force that registered a magnitude of 6.8 on the surface wave magnitude scale, marking one of the most significant intraplate earthquakes in Australia's history. This earthquake not only altered the physical landscape, but also left a profound impact on the lives of those who experienced its devastating power. Mickering is located within the Yilgarn Craton, an ancient geological formation that spans much of Western Australia. This craton is one of the oldest parts of the Earth's crust, and primarily comprises of Archean-era high-grade metamorphic rocks, including granitoids and various other rock types, intersected by Proterozoic dikes. Despite the region's perceived geological stability, the Yilgarn Craton lies within the southwest seismic zone, an area known for unexpected seismic activity. The local terrain around Meckering is mostly flat, with few outcrops visible due to the extensive weathering of the underlying rocks. The area is characterised by deeply weathered granitoids and metasedimentary rocks, with a complex network of faults crisscrossing the subsurface. These faults, which run in multiple orientations, play a critical role in the region's seismic dynamics, predisposing the area to both dextral and reverse faulting when seismic stresses are released. At the time of the earthquake, Meckering was a modest farming town, home to about 240 residents. The day began uneventfully, with people going about their usual routines. Unbeknownst to them, the stress along the faults beneath their feet was reaching a critical level. Suddenly, the ground began to heave and crack as a series of faults ruptured in quick succession, creating a violent shaking that lasted for nearly a minute. The primary rupture zone extended about 37 kilometers, including several faults, the Meckering Fault, the Splinter Fault, and the Burgess Fault Complex. These faults, hidden beneath the surface, were exposed as the earth opened up, forming an intricate pattern of fractures and displacements. The Meckering Fault featured a notable dip between 35 and 52 degrees, indicative of both compressional and lateral movement. The faulting involved both dextral slip and reverse thrusting, leading to vertical displacements of up to 2.45 meters and horizontal offsets up to 1.54 meters. The magnitude of the Meckering earthquake has been recorded differently in various sources. While many records state that the earthquake had a magnitude of 6.8 on the surface wave magnitude scale, some sources reported as a 6.6 .6 on the moment magnitude scale. This discrepancy arises from the use of different measurement scales, which can yield slightly different magnitudes due to their varying sensitivities and calculations. Both scales, however, agree on the significant impact of the earthquake, which was felt over a vast area and caused widespread damage. The earthquake's impact on the town of Meckering was catastrophic. Many of the town's buildings, constructed without consideration for seismic events, were severely damaged or completely destroyed. Houses crumbled, the local water pipeline ruptured, and the railway line was left twisted and bent, cutting off a vital transport route. Roads were broken apart and fence lines, once straight, were now offset by several metres. The natural environment was also dramatically altered. Trees were uprooted and large cracks appeared in the ground. Streams saw their flow patterns disrupted. This impact on the river system was one of the many ways the earthquake reshaped the landscape around Meckering. One of the most significant environmental impacts of the Meckering earthquake was the rerouting of a stream in the region. The seismic activity caused a notable shift in the stream's course. In the weeks following the earthquake, aerial photographs revealed that the stream's pre-1968 path had been disrupted by the surface faulting, prompting local authorities to undertake earthworks to re-establish the stream's original flow path. This rerouting is a vivid example of how seismic events can alter not just the human-made environment, but also the natural hydrology of an area, with it impacting ecosystems and land use. In the aftermath of the main quake, Meckering and its surrounding areas experienced numerous aftershocks, with the largest reaching a magnitude of 5.7. These aftershocks further damaged buildings and infrastructure, compounding the fear and uncertainty among the residents. Many people chose to sleep outside, fearing that further quakes might collapse their already weakened homes. The aftershocks also provided more data on the fault system beneath Meckering. The faults showed complex interactions of thrusting and lateral movements, demonstrating the intricate nature of the subsurface geology. The presence of these aftershocks and the potential for future seismic events emphasised the need for better understanding and preparation in such seismically active regions. 
The 1968 Meckering earthquake offered invaluable insights into intraplate seismicity, an area of study less understood than the more common interplate earthquakes, which occur along tectonic plate boundaries. High resolution aeromagnetic surveys conducted in the area revealed how ancient geological structures influenced the faulting patterns. These surveys identified that the fault ruptures closely correlated with linear magnetic anomalies, which were interpreted as faults and dikes within the bedrock. These features suggested that the earthquake was the result of the reactivation of ancient geological structures under the current stress regime. The analysis showed that the main rupture likely initiated at a depth of around 3 kilometers, with a dominant movement along the north-south trending east dipping thrust fault. This faulting was consistent with the regional stress field, which had an east to west orientation of maximum principal stress. The intersection of various geological structures created zones of stress concentration, leading to the earthquake's occurrence. The Meckering earthquake left a lasting mark on the town and its inhabitants. In the immediate aftermath, rebuilding efforts focused on constructing buildings that could withstand future seismic events. The earthquake also prompted changes in building codes and construction practices across Western Australia, emphasising the need for earthquake resistant designs. For the scientific community, the Meckering earthquake served as a critical case study for understanding intraplate seismicity. It underscored the importance of studying ancient fault systems and the potential for significant seismic events in areas previously thought to be stable. The earthquake demonstrated that even in regions with no history of recent seismic activity, the right combination of geological and stress conditions could lead to significant earthquakes. The 1968 earthquake proves that even in seemingly stable regions, the Earth is dynamic and ever-changing, shaped by forces that have been at work for billions of years. The lessons learned from Meckering continue to inform our understanding of earthquakes and the need to prepare for the unexpected in our ever-changing world. I hope you found this topic to be as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started the second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.